That's pretty cool. That one a little bit there. Sure hope I'm not dooming the colony, adding so much to them. Just like here. Let's give you crashing colony brood and see what happens. <laughs> hey, Ryan Williamson here. I wanted to do a video on kind of the risk we play breeding with for mite resistance and some of the pitfalls and I don't know, some of the things that have gone wrong, but also really cool experiences of, of seeing things that I didn't expect to see. This colony here is, is what I wanted to chat about. This is a daughter of a mutt queen and she showed up as being pretty resistant to mites last year. The big question is how resistant are, was she? She'd been treatment free for about nine months when I did the assessment. Is that right? Uh, almost nine months. Yeah, really close to nine months. And, you know, the question is, is that enough treatment-free time through the whole growing season for mites to develop and up enough to then get a good assessment of mite resistance? Mite washes were showing up pretty good. Let's see, August 22nd, I washed two mites. So not too bad for the last, the previous treatment being Christmas time. Went in and did a Harbo assay and found one non-viable mite in other words, the mite had laid a daughter or a son, I can't remember which now, and, but at the point that I found that, the pupa was getting close to emerging and there was definitely no way that that daughter, the reproduction was successful. In other words, the daughter son were too young to be viable. Once the pupa emerges, they would have been killed by the colony. They were not, not developed enough. So non-viable mite, that's pretty great shows a sense of resistance. Um, in some ways, a lot of people think that's a lot better than finding no reproductive mites or no mites at all in 200 pupa. It, to find some non-viable or non-reproductive is, is considered much more, um, you know, it just shows that you have some mite load, but they're keeping the reproduction down. So then this spring I did mite washes again in, in April. Oh gosh, I don't have it written on there, but I want to say I, I washed four mites, which was a little bit higher than most of my other resistant colonies coming out of winter. All the Harbo 4 assay colonies survived winter, but a few were higher mite loads. And those ones I really was curious about. You know, what's going on? Why is there a little bit more mite wash going on? And, and so I then later did some Harbo assays. I, I was wrong. That was March that I washed for. In April, it washed 15. April 25th, 15 mites. I'm like, whoa, something's going on. Did a Harbo assay, went in and undoing the uh, worker brood, I actually didn't find any reproductive mites, which is like, hmm, let's open up the drone brood, which is where mites like to reproduce. And oh yes, I found reproductive mites, quite a few. And also some non-reproductive mites in those, which was kind of curious, uh, but definitely more reproductive than non-reproductive. So eh, let's see what, I'll, I'll let it go and see what happens, curiosity. And in this, then come June 10th, I did another mite wash. I'll try to show an image. And we had some amazing mite wash. It jumped up to 139 mites in a 300B sample. So, oh boy. All right, definitely not a breeder. I never actually considered it a breeder just because of the higher mite loads, but like, we're out. All right, now I've got this colony that's like riddled with mites. What am I gonna do? Stepping back, I've been also trying to breed other breeders and, and assess them and thinking, okay, well, how can I raise the mite pressure on some of these test colonies to see if they're resistant to mites? And well, hey, I got mites over here. So the idea was let's, let's move mites, uh, which is r really backwards to the way I'm used to keeping bees. You know, it's like, yeah, kill the mites, right? So instead here, I'm spreading the mites. So this is a colony, um, it, uh, it was resistant mother or mostly resistant mother to mites. And I took a bunch of virgins with a friend uh, up to a, a special spot up in the mountains where he has a hunting camp. And we set all these queens out to mate up there with the, with the drones. So it's kind of a way of controlling mating in, in a way and trying to pick up more resistance. So four days ago, I opened up this colony a day after adding brood from this mite res riddled colony. So I took cat brood, not the bees, because I didn't want to hurt or cause fighting. So I moved cat brood with the assumption that there's going to be a lot of mites in that brood. And I indeed saw signs of that. So I moved over, it's a little bit spotty brood pattern. And this particular colony just 24 hours later ripped it to shreds. It was pretty awesome. 
I want to try to show a video of, or include a video of that. Ooh, this one's looking good. This is number 18 crossed with the Magic Mountain Boys. Look at that. They are going to town uncapping. Ah. That's pretty cool. Chewing it down. That's what we want to see. Look at that. They really are chewing it down. Lighting's terrible here. Maybe if I hold it up like that, it'd be better. So this is brewed from a colony that had a huge mite infestation and moved it over here to this colony, which was <clears throat> part of this experiment testing, um, mating my, my virgin queens with um, feral colonies. And it's about a friend of mine has really good luck with. This is good. <laughs> I'm gonna check another one. I just missed it. I just saw a worker yanking out a pupa. That was really cool to see. This is Latchaw Carney crossed with Magic Mountain Boys and not seen quite as much on capping, but this brood's further advanced. It's emerging, so I wouldn't have expected them to be able to go to town with the VSH. That's too bad I missed that. Let's see what the other side looks like. Yeah, this is a little older emerging brood, so we're infesting this colony with a lot of mites, and then we'll see how they handle it, I guess. And there's one being uncapped there. Yeah, this one's not quite as exciting as that. So far, number 18 crossed with the Magic Mountain Boys is pretty remarkable. Okay, this is another, another one of my Star Fox crossed with Magic Mountain Boys and put in this infected comb. And they are doing some uncapping. You know, this is highly mite infested. Kind of risky. There's one being uncapped. There's another one they're chewing down there. Let's see. Oh, there's another one. More being uncapped. That's pretty cool. That one, a little bit there. Sure hope I'm not dooming the colony, adding so much to them. Just like here. Let's give you crashing colony brood and see what happens. <laughs> Gotta love experimenting. Let's open it up and see four days after what's happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my phone on a little clip so that I can video while I work. And this is the frame that I slipped in, medium frame. So did they uncap even more? It was pretty remarkable how much they'd uncapped. So in the end, they have barely any cap brood left. They really went to town and uncapped quite a bit. Now what I'm tempted to do, oh yes, I think I'm gonna have to do this. Uh, spur of the moment thought. I'm gonna come in here and let's see how old these pupa are. Oh, they're a good age. All right, another day would be nice, but I think they're just old enough. What I'm tempted to do now is to take this and do a harbo assay. In other words, start pulling out the pupa and see how many reproductive mites I find. And all this is a little bit uh, jumping the gun. I, looking at the age of the workers in this bottom colony, they're just getting to the age that they should be the ones that are responsible for the hygienic action. And the workers from the split that I made to make this colony should be aged out mostly but it's it's really if i'd waited another week to do this experiment boy it would have been smarter but my goal at the time was just add mites and then that way when i do a harbo assay in the fall i'll know that this colony had been um subjected to a lot of mites but the way they went to town on this brood makes me excited to oh let's see what's going on so what i'm gonna do now is we're gonna shake the bees off of this frame and yeah we've got most of them we're gonna go up and pull some pupa and see what's, see what's left. Very curious. Again, this is not really a perfect scenario because things are aged out. 
a little bit or not old enough i should say and but let's let's just check it out this is gonna be fun so we'll go up to the shop where kids are out of school and they're playing summer vacation doing stuff on the porch and i'm gonna pause the video and get set up to do the assay all right so got this brood here and i'm starting to pull pupa out and like I said, I was pretty positive it was riddled with mites. They uncapped and removed almost all of it. But I am actually finding some reproductive mites here. I've already found two. And I've only pulled out five pupa. So, again, this is pretty early in the stage of the um, colony as far as assessing mites. You know, the, we haven't had a full turnover of the workforce. And also pretty excessive amount of mites that I added, probably more than a colony would typically experience on a frame. The frame was also up away from the brood, and that might be a bit of an issue as far as you know, not being right in the brood nest, but in the box above, because it was a medium frame, and box below were deep frames. So this is actually doing a little better. And basically just you know, carefully, um, I would like this, these pupa to be a little older, but, you know, spur of the moment decision to do this. So and I'm not really going to score this as the colony's Harbo assay score because they're so early in on that stage. But curiosity is pretty fun, you know. It's just so neat to see what the bees are doing and kind of cool to see that while they did go bonkers uncapping, they didn't get it all. Um, I don't know if this shows, on, there's a mite that was in there reproducing. That's the founder's mite. Uh, and she's crawling around on the cell. There we go. Let's see. We'll do a few more. And, and also, you know, all these assays, in my view, personal experience, they're all little bits of a snapshot. I can, oh, that one had a mite on it. And I was talking and not paying attention. And... It's a young pupa, but I, she pooped on the cell wall, but I don't see any young. So that's curious. But the pupa is quite young as well. So there's, there's the mite. I don't know if this will have focused or not on that, but there she is on the pupa. I'm really going too fast. Um, hmm. That's curious. Oftentimes when they poop on the um, cell, then that means they're reproductive, but I see no young. Often if they're not reproductive, they'll, they'll actually, the mite will uh, poop on the pupa. But again, these are pretty young, so I was just curious to see if they had missed some, and they sure have missed some mites, which is kind of also nice in a way, because I know that I am in infecting the colony with mites. I don't want to undo all these pupa because I do actually want to add mite load to the colony. And if they had uncapped everything with mites, then <laughs> in a way is a bit counterproductive because I do want to add mites to the colony to give them a more accurate Harbo assay when I come back in, in late August, early September to, to do my Harbo assays. So I'm going to stop. Uh, I've only undone, what, 13 pupa found. I guess that would be three or four mites, so yeah, it's it's not, not boding well as far as this being perfectly resistant, but also not bad given the mite load that I gave them. So the Harbo assay, you know, ideally I would have pupa that are, you know, more on the dark, darker than this, getting closer to emerging, and then when, when you find a mite, and it, it just makes it a lot easier to determine if they're reproductive or not. Uh, so some of these where I found, like, the mite had pooped on the cell wall, the pupa has a long time to keep developing. It could be that indeed there was a daughter or a son in there that I missed uh, just because I'm not really being, I'm not fully set up for doing Harbo assays. This was very much a spur of the moment. Uh, but yeah, so the older the, the pupa is, then the easier it is, I find, to make that determination if the mite was reproductive or not because there's less time for the mite to be reproducing. Well, I'm going to go put this frame back in and add more mites back to my colony. How strange is that? 
and it's it's such a weird way to to beekeep it counter I don't know just counter to the way I've kept bees for a long time and yet I think the results from resistance breeding are so worth the effort and and the risks that we're going to add mites in all right well I'm going to sign off here and get back to beekeeping thanks for watching <laughs>